Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about 4.2 analysis design and implementation of performance test activities. In that we are breaking down into different segments and today we are talking about 4.2.6 basic structure of a performance test script. As a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be understanding what exactly is the basic structure which you follow for creating your performance test script, as this is the very first step that you have to prepare and set up your script, which will be further created as multiple instances to apply the load as a part of the performance testing. Now, the basic structure generally understands or means that what is that a user is expected to do. Now, just like a single user or like a virtual user, you try to imitate all those actions which user has to perform and then add with all your additional steps which you want initialize at that point of time, including the think time which you want to apply there. You may be parameterizing that particular set of instructions so that he can try with multiple iterations and with several test data as well. Now that's where the structure comes into picture to set up that what is that you need in order to prepare your basic script which will be used in a controller scenario to apply the load. Now a performance test script would simulate a user or component activity that contributes to the load on the system under test. It initiates request to the server in a proper order and at a given pace. The best way to create a performance test script depends on the load generation approach used. Of course, the load generation approach, which definitely talks about how you will be generating the load and definitely that can influence the way you create your performance test scripts. For example, the traditional way is to record communication between the client and the system or component on the protocol level and then play it back after the script has been parameterized and documented. The parameterization result in a scalable and maintainable script, but the task of parameterizing may be time consuming. Now here definitely we are talking about capturing those events in form of recording and playback to confirm that if the script is working fine, but enhancing that script with transaction statements, check off the text or maybe check off the image or including the parameterization of the script will definitely be a part of it. Additionally, recording at the GUI level typically involves capturing GUI action of a single client with a test execution tool and running that script with the load generation tool to present multiple clients. So no matter which tool we are talking about, be it load runner, be it JMeter, you initialize with capturing one user's event and then apply with the you know, load generation tool to multiply that instance to multiple. Programming may be done using protocol requests, that is like something like HTTP request, GUI actions, and API calls. In this case of programming script, the exact sequence of requests sent to and received from the real system must be determined, which may be not trivial. Now here we are just trying to make sure that what kind of communication you should capture plus what kind of add-ons you should be considerate about in terms of interacting with the HTTP request, GUI actions which a user can perform and during that activity what kind of APIs will be called must be established. The connection to these things play a crucial role and sometimes it might be difficult to have all those accessibility or access to those information which a user need to have in order to perform that transaction completely and successfully. Further to add, we are talking breaking them into simple forms like starting with overall structure. Often the script has an initialization section, main section that may be executed multiple times and a cleanup section which is at the end. So if you are referring to load runner, generally the VU gen is the component where you generate your script and prepare your script. Now VU gen comes by default with three default actions. One is vuser init, which stands for virtual user initialize. Second is the main action. And third is vuser end, which stands for virtual user end. Now generally the vuser init and end has their protocols or set of rules that they will be executed at least once by default at the beginning and at the end respectively. 
So initialize as an action can be used to capture the launch and login and end can be used to sign off or refresh the page to go back to the initial screen. Now these actions are specially such designed that a user can mention those activities here which they want to do at the beginning or at the end at least once or at most once. So these actions cannot be iterated even if you are parameterizing your script and running your script for multiple iteration. The only action which gets iterated is the main action. Now this main action should consist of all those set of activities which you want to repeat with a user interaction. So generally the overall structure includes the breakup of the actions and the action should be defined in such a way that they should be iterated in the main action only and the other two actions are restricted to one, one iteration and respectively in the beginning at the end. The data collection part. To collect response times, timers should be added to the script to measure how long a request or a combination of request takes. The time request should match a meaningful unit for logical work. For example, a business transaction for adding an item to an order or submitting an order. In our previous tutorials, we have discussed about the transaction. And a transaction statement in a performance test can capture accurate results in terms of the time taken to perform a set of action. Now this action could be anything specific and meaningful. For example, to log in into the screen, how long did the user take? Similarly, to search a flight, how long did the user take? Now selecting a flight and making the payment, how long did the user take? So each of these activity can separately be added with set of transaction statements, which will help us to capture the exact and accurate time required to do this job. It is important to understand what exactly is measured. In the case of protocol level script, it is server and the network response time only, while GUI script measures end toned time which basically comes with the uh, user interaction. But of course, in the script, this uh, protocol level script, the server and the, the network response times will be captured. Finally, talking about the result verification and error handling. Now, an important part of the script is result verification and error handling. Even in the best load testing tool, the default error handling tends to be minimal, such as checking the HTTP request return code. Now, so it is recommended to add additional checks to verify that what the request actually returned. Also, if any cleanup is required in case of an error, it likely will need to be implemented manually because not generally it is pre-configured. You have to enable certain settings to do that job. A good practice is to verify that the script is doing what it is supposed to do uh, using indirect methods, for example, checking the database to verify that the proper information was added. Now, generally, if you talk about the tools like JMeter and LoadRunner, they do return us the status code, but not to preciseness, like for every single thing. You just get that whether this particular thing happened or not. But you may have to enable those basic settings in the tool which captures the response code as well in the replay log. And the replay log can definitely justify you whether the response was 200 okay or it was anything else. Now script may include other logics uh, specifying rules concerning when and how the server request will be made. One example is to set synchronization point because sometimes the page may take a little longer to load and perform such activities and the script moves to the next line, which is done by specifying that the script would wait for an event that at that point before proceeding to the next step. Now the synchronization point may be used to ensure that a specific action is invoked concurrently or to coordinate work between several scripts. Performance testing scripts are software so creating a performance testing script is a software development activity kind of thing. That means it requires a lot of effort to be done in order to achieve that script what you really need to run a performance test upon. It should include quality assurance and test to verify that the script works as expected with a whole range of input data. That means creating a performance test script is just not a simple task like a functional script. It may take a lot of your effort. It may require a lot of inputs to be added and a lot of other activities to be performed in order to do that. So 
making sure that every single step is being considered, making sure all the actions which are required to be performed during the execution is considered here, and then you run the script. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.